Okay, these are 10 multiple choice questions from IB past papers um, all about projectiles. Let's get started. And um, we're looking here at projectile motion. This is our parabola shape of vertical against horizontal displacement. And we're being asked to talk about the magnitude of the horizontal component of velocity and the magnitude of the vertical component between these points O and P. You should be aware that point O, we have zero vertical velocity and at point P we have a non-zero vertical velocity. Let's look at our assumptions. We've got air resistance, which is negligible, and so therefore we can make two assumptions. One, that my horizontal velocity is constant, and two, that my vertical acceleration is constant. Now, regardless of whether it's, it's constant or not at this stage, you should be able to see that at the top, if our vertical velocity is zero, uh, if we're then at this point P, we should have a non-zero vertical velocity, i.e. the velocity has increased. Okay, So therefore, we have constant horizontal velocity, increased vertical velocity by increase with referring to the magnitude here, and therefore the answer is A. An almost identical problem here. We've got the projectile fired at horizontal. However, we are now not um, assuming that air resistance is negligible. The reason we know that is because the shape is um, asymmetric. Okay, in the case that air resistance is not uh, negligible, our horizontal velocity is going to decrease. And the reason for this is because the air resistance acts in opposition to our motion. So therefore, we can rule out two of our answers, C and D here. And then we've got to think about the vertical component of the velocity, again, between the point zero and P. Well, again, it doesn't matter um, regarding the air resistance whether the situation we're considering here is really that the vertical velocity at the top here is always zero and so therefore our vertical velocity must have increased when we're at the bottom. Okay, The vertical acceleration is non-constant but it's still greater than zero in magnitude anyway and so therefore my magnitude of my vertical component of velocity is going to increase at this point. We've now got two graphs. We've got the constant um, velocity in the x-direction and velocity in the y-direction which has a constant um, gradient, i.e. a constant acceleration. A parabola is the, pa the path which describes um, the motion of a projectile. The horizontal, should be, the horizontal velocity should be a constant flat line and the vertical acceleration should be constant and therefore a straight line for our vy. And that's why here our particle is moving in a parabola. Don't worry about b, c and d, We'll discuss graphs for these um, at a later date. Okay, let's think a little bit more about graphs now. We're going to think now about the um, vertical velocity of a ball, which is thrown, as you can see, at an angle. Now, notice we throw it, we're throwing it up and then back down again. Why is that important? Well, it will, it will dictate the size and the shape of the graph that we're going to produce. Notice first that the ball is thrown at an angle, meaning that the vertical component is going to be less than the magnitude, which is v. Okay, so when we're plotting our graph, we need to make sure that the graph starts at a value less than capital V. Why? Because v is the magnitude of this vector, and when we're decomposing our vectors and um, resolving our vectors, both vx and vy are both going to be smaller than v itself. So that leaves us with c and d. We then need to think about the shape of these graphs. Notice here in C we spend more time going up than going down. In D we spend more time um, going down than up. If we look at the picture clearly it's asymmetric we're going to spend more time going down than going up. Okay we have an asymmetric path which means that the ball spends more time falling than rising and that our final downward velocity is going to be greater than our initial upward velocity. And that's why the answer here is D. We're now comparing two um, types of motion. Y, which is simply dropped, and X, which is um, undergoes projectile motion. They're dropped at the same time. They have, this, they have um, different masses, but the same size. We're going to ignore air resistance. Okay, well... We know that the time taken to fall to the ground is determined by the vertical motion. So we need to only consider acceleration here 
in the y direction. We know that the acceleration is, and the initial velocity and the initial height are the same, and therefore the time is the same. Why is the acceleration the same? Well, remember, our acceleration, regardless of the mass, is always going to be equal to g. It is independent of the mass and independent of the size. And so therefore, y and x are going to hit the ground at the same time, assuming we can ignore air resistance. If we didn't ignore air resistance, this would be different because they have different sizes. A stone is thrown from a cliff and it lands on the sea in the sea as, as shown below. Okay, we've got this asymmetric path again. Okay, and we want to think about some statements. The vertical component of the stone's displacement is constant. Well, no, because we're moving down and up. It's therefore not constant. The horizontal component of the stone's displacement is constant. Again, no, because we're moving from left to right. The vertical component of the stone's velocity is constant. Again, this is not true because we have an acceleration in the y direction. And so therefore, d is the only one which is left. Because remember, when we're assuming that there's no air resistance, it's negligible. We can have zero air resistance, therefore zero acceleration in the x direction, and therefore constant horizontal velocity. We're now going to do a quick calculation. We've got a projectile fired horizontally from the top of a cliff. We're told that it hits the ground four seconds later at a distance two kilometers from the base. What is the height? In this case, we want to use the vertical motion. We're going to ignore everything um, horizontal. We're going to use s equal to ut plus half at squared because in the question, we want to know s and we also know u. u is zero because we're fired horizontally. There's no vertical motion. t is um, four seconds. And then a is our minus 10, that's gravity. So we can get rid of the ut because as I said, in the vertical direction, our initial velocity is zero. This makes our life a little bit easier. All we're doing is a half times minus 10, which is just g here, times four squared, which is gonna come out at minus 80. In other words, there's a displacement of minus 80. The height of the cliff must have been 80 meters. Note here, that the two kilometers that you're told are com is completely um, a red herring here. There's no need to know this information, it's just simply an additional fact which does not affect the time taken by the uh, projectile. Last three are all proof questions which are really nice, don't require any um, calculations. However, you do need to think about the setup of the problem. We're asked, being asked what the range of the football is and the range is simply the distance travelled in the x direction. So because we know that we have um, zero air resistance, Okay, that's what's stated in the question. We can simply calculate the range by multiplying the time by the x component of the velocity. The x component of the velocity is simply u times cos of the angle because um, we can simply build our right angle triangle. We're looking at the adjacent to our hypotenuse here. So there's u cos theta. I therefore can substitute my equations in from bottom into top. And I've got r is equal to U, t, u cos theta t, and just tidying things up, that's u t cos theta, hence b. We have to be quite slightly careful with this one because we've messed around with the angles slightly, and so where theta would normally measure, be measured from the horizontal, we've actually decided to measure from the vertical. This is a little trick just to check that you're paying attention. How do we do this? Well, again, we'll go to s equal to u t plus half at squared. We're being asked to calculate time, that's why I've chosen this one, and we're being told that we want to know the time taken for the stone to hit the surface of the lake. Well, in other words, in a vertical sense, we're looking at the moment at which the ball, um, sorry, the stone has zero displacement. Okay, so we can sub in our zero displacement, and here I've also um, calculated uh, substituted, sorry, an expression for the initial vertical velocity. Now, I don't like this question because they've used v here. Normally, we'd use v as an initial, as a final velocity. Here, we're using it as an initial one. It's kind of messy. And we're also looking at this theta. Notice if we're looking at a right angle triangle, this um, side of my triangle is going to be my initial vertical velocity. That's v times cosine of theta. And again, we need to remember t here. We've also got a, well a is just minus g, and I've um, included my minus g 
in the subtraction there. We rearrange the equation. We've got half gt squared is equal to v cos theta t. I can cancel one of the t's and then rearrange to give 2v cos theta divided by g. Last one, we've got a projectile fired from level ground at, an angle, at speed v again and angle theta. We're ignoring air resistance. So we can assume again that we've got um, constant acceleration in the y direction, it's just g. We want to know the um, correct expression for the maximum height reached by the projectile. And we know that at maximum height, the velocity in the y direction is going to be zero. Initially, this time our angle is measured from the horizontal, and so therefore my initial velocity in the y direction is going to be v sine theta. So we know v, we know u in the y direction, we want to know s, and we also know a, and so therefore we're going to use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We know that v is equal to zero, and we know u is equal to v sine theta, and we've got a equal to minus g. We've therefore got an expression which is zero equal to v squared sine squared theta. Notice this is sine theta times sine theta, not sine theta squared, minus 2gs. We can rearrange and we end up with our expression v squared sine squared theta over 2g. I would encourage you at this stage to think about dimensions as well. If you take the dimensions of, um, for example, v, meters per second, if we then square it, we're looking at meters squared per second squared, and on the bottom we've got a gravity, uh, gravitational acceleration, which is meters per second squared. If you take the time to work out the dimensions, you'll find that the units of both A and B are both simply meters, and that's what would refer to the maximum height reached by the projectile. Again, as ever, that's quite quick. I do encourage you to take some time to go through these. Um, try the questions, um, ideally, one more time if you're finding them difficult before you watch it again to see if it makes more sense. Any questions, please ask.